All right, so we are now in video six of chapter three. We're looking at active movement into and out of the cell. Um, as I explained in the uh, previous video, video six or video five, about passive movement, there are two types of descriptions for everything in the body um, determined on whether it needs energy to happen or whether it does not. Things that do not need energy to happen are called passive processes. We looked at four passive movements into the into and out of a cell, diffusion, facilitated diffusion, filtration, and then osmosis. In this chapter, we're looking at the active movement into and out of the cell, which again, by definition, means these are going to require energy. There's some cost to have them. Now, these are the, the main um, the main culprit, so to speak. Uh, you'll see as we go through, these basically are, are the same. Um, we're gonna just see different aspects of them. These all require a vesicle. And I'm not gonna spell it all out because I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do it. And then um, the other one is active transport. So that's what we look at first. So active transport, again, doesn't require a vesicle, but it does require a carrier molecule, like we looked at in facilitated diffusion, this idea that there's a little channel, a little carrier molecule that allows for things to move across. In this instance, what we're looking at is we're going to have the membrane. All right, I did a terrible job of drawing that, but I want to have a membrane, and on one side, I'm going to have, let's say, a relatively low concentration and on the inside or outside either way on the other side of the membrane I have a high concentration now diffusion or just what we think of as how things move they generally are going to move from areas of high concentration over here this is high concentration to areas of low concentration, that is moving along the concentration gradient. But there are times when I need things to move from a low concentration to high concentration. And the only way that can happen is to have some sort of pump, some sort of energy um, to, to pump things across. So if I take and I erase my little guys here and I go back and I say I'm going to draw so I'm going to have little things here on either side, and there's going to be a better drawing of this, but they're going to require the molecule ATP to, to make this happen. And so they're actually going to pump things from one side to the other, and it's moving things against the concentration gradient of the, the solutes. And so, again, this requires ATP, and it can be sugars like glucose or amino acids, and we looked at these in facilitated diffusion. They can't get across, but as long as they're moving along the concentration gradient, I just need to open up a channel, and it'll work. But if I need to move it against concentration gradient, a simple channel won't help. I need to have something that pumps, and that's going to require energy. Now, there are times when we have this secondary active transport instead of ATP. Um, it will use little uh, other um, ions to help, you know, move, uh, move and make the pump happen. But we'll see that. But in general, there's still a cost. There's still something that needs to be done. So this is looking at what we will talk about as the um, sodium potassium pump. Um, in the uh, in the nervous system in the axon, but it's going to require ATP to cause it to move, and it's that ATP as it's doing it, it's literally making a pump. It is going to take the the stuff that is low in concentration on the inside and pump it out to its high concentration on the outside, and it's going to take things like the um, potassium that is low on the outside and it's going to pump it to the area where it's high so it's moving against the concentration and so it requires energy it's literally like saying facilitated diffusion would be like if i have a a boulder up here all i need to do is get a little nudge to it and it will end up rolling down to the bottom but no matter what i do if it's at the bottom and i want to put it back up to the top i have to use energy and that's what we're talking about here 
Again, secondary active transport is going to end up, instead of ATP, it's going to require a, um, a carrier or some sort of other key to unlock this. In this, it's sodium, talking about how there's a sodium transport that helps glucose get pumped in. And while it doesn't cost ATP, it does cost the ions as we move through. So then we get to what is called endocytosis. Endocytosis and its process, which is exocytosis. Endocytosis is movement of substance into the cell. Exocytosis is out of the cell. But it requires a vesicle to be made. And so if I have the cell membrane, I'm not going to draw the phospholipid bilayer on there, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have something that's going to come right up to it. It's going to bind basically with the cell membrane, and the cell membrane will end up causing the creation of like a little vesicle with this substance in it that will eventually, you know, get in uh, endocytosis gets brought into the cell. Now, there are uh, some more specific definitions. Pinocytosis and phagocytosis are the two main ones. Pinocytosis is when we're talking about the substance coming in being a liquid. Phagocytosis is when it's a solid. Now, um, phagocytosis, as far as a definition goes, this, or as far as a word goes, this is one you definitely need to know. You will see it multiple times. Uh, for instance, in the uh, white blood cells and the lymph, uh, the um, leukocytes, when you study them in 211, you're going to find that there's two types of them that are called phagocytic cells, and they go around and engulf the bacteria, the pathogen, to get rid of it. And so phagocytosis is generally mean bringing in solids. Pinocytosis is bringing in liquids. Um, now, there is another type that's called receptor-mediated. Now, do not lose sight of the simple fact that receptor-mediated means it needs a receptor to make happen. And so what would happen in this instance is a cell can control the receptors on its surface. So if I have a substance, let's say it's hormone A, and I need it, the body will create receptors and that bind to hormone A, and then th through that we form this vesicle. But if I don't need hormone A, my body doesn't create these receptors, all right? So it's receptor mediated. Cells can control it. They built, they, they put the receptors on the cell surface when they want the substance to come in and that happens. So it's receptor mediated. And again, do not lose sight of the simple fact that receptor mediated needs receptors to make happen. So these are just pictures showing uh, how this works. Again, re receptors, and again, my body can control, the cells, I should say, of my body control the receptors on the surface. When I need this substance here, whatever it may be, I create the receptors. When I don't, I don't. Exocytosis, as I said, is simply things leaving the cell. So endocytosis is coming in, exocytosis is leaving. Now, transcytosis, combines the two. So I do not like the idea of what they use as an example, but um, an easy example is if I have the cells of that line my um, GI tract, I've got my food substance as it is being digested in here, and it's being broken down, and let's say it's being broken down to glucose, and I'm just going to write a G for glucose. So I've got cells here, and, and I'm using this as an example. I should, it probably is a bad example, and I realize. So I've got blood here. Um, glucose doesn't do this. So again, it's a bad example, but I don't want to talk about HIV um, and how it crosses uh, the boundary of. So I'm just going to show you all transcytosis is. It's going to come here. Transcytosis means it's going to do endocytosis on one side move through and then bind to the other side and leave exocytosis. So all transcytosis is, is it, it is both endocytosis and exocytosis. So it goes from one side to the other. Now, um, these pictures again kind of show this. 
And this picture is basically showing uh, the process of transcytosis. And again, it's going to be endocytosis on one side, exocytosis on the other. It is going across.